All right. Praise God. Jesus bless this message. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Okay, everybody. Um, we are still in Proverbs like we were yesterday. I'm going to talk about parallelism today. But after I upload this video, I want y'all to click that bell down here because I'm going to give you a video today, what I've been working on all week, to show you the timeline we are on to go into the tribulation and to uh, the, the, the uh, catching up to going with Jesus, the thousand year millennial reign. We are knocking at the door, man. We are knocking at the door. Now, like the Bible says, and it's true, no man knows the day or the hour at all. And I can't tell you the day or the hour either, but I can sure tell you the season and you're supposed to know the season and we're in it, y'all. And I'm going to do that video after this one uploads. Okay. But let's stay with where we are right now. Talking about, because when you read the Bible, people are actually taking one verse. They're not understanding it. They're thinking they know what it means and they're making up all kinds of ideas about it. And it's not true. Jesus told me my own people don't know my word. And I see why. Okay. So, like where it says uh, about women aren't supposed to teach. When Paul was talking to that one specific group of women in that particular town, why did he tell them that? Because if you read around it, like you're supposed to, they were disobeying their husbands. They're God's a God of order. Man, it's God, then man, then woman. Okay? And you can't go disobeying your husband and go out there and try to teach the word of God. You can't do that. Okay, so, and that's what they were doing. So he told them, be quiet, sit down and learn. But then he went to the next town where the women were obedient and stuff to God, to their husbands and everything. And they were helping him teach and preach the word of God. So it's about obedience, not about your gender. But people don't know how to read the Bible. My own people, he said, don't know my word. So let's talk about in Proverbs. Let's give you an example. Parallel lines, they're very important features in the biblical Proverbs, Okay. You got an English proverb, and that normally has one line, such as, a penny saved is a penny earned. Imagine that. I don't feel like writing it all out. A penny saved is a penny earned. That's just one line. That's just one little proverb, right? But this is a Hebrew proverb right here, and that normally has two lines, like this. In Proverbs 10, 23, a fool finds pleasure in evil conduct, but... Line two, a man of understanding delights in wisdom. Now, how do we get wisdom, which is what God's trying to teach here today? You got to get it from God's word. God anoints teachers like myself and puts us out here to guide and motivate and help along with. But the Holy Spirit's the one going to reveal it to you if you delight in seeking it. The wisdom, get in the word of God. Study, okay? So, the sense of the proverb is found in the interplay of these two lines right here. You understand? Write this down. Parallelism means that the second line of the verse advances the thought of the first line in some way. Write that down. Parallelism means that the second line of the verse advances the thought of the first line in some way. I'm going to highlight that. So determining how this movement occurs, it allows us to understand the sense and the meaning of the proverb. Okay? And there's different kinds of parallelism where I'm going to show you today. I'm just going to write notes today. And I'm going to give you some examples. Let's start out with Proverbs 16, 13 right here. Oops. 1613. Now, I want you to pay close attention. It says, Kings take pleasure in honest lips. They value a man who speaks truth. Okay? And I'm going to give you some examples that I find in this parallel right here, in these parallels. Um, number one, the first thing I see is kings are the main subject in the whole thing. The whole thing, line one and line two, they, kings, they, kings take pleasure. They value a man. Talking about kings in both lines. So you want to write that down. Both lines are talking about kings. The second thing where you see it says taking pleasure, takes pleasure right there. That's parallel to value. So you'll put take pleasure equals value. 
taking pleasure equals value. Sorry, let me get this tripod straight, y'all. The first thing is both lines speak of kings. Okay? Number two, takes. Takes pleasure equals value. But, <laughs> yeah, they're taking pleasure and it must mean something to them, right? So taking pleasure is parallel to value. But valuing something is a step beyond just taking pleasure in it. So that to value something at the same time is a step beyond just pleasure. Because you can see how much kings take pleasure in honest lips. They so said they enjoy people that got honest lips. They value a man who speaks truth that means so much more to them in line two than line one. Line one means something, but line two means so much more. Do you see that? Okay. It's also telling me kings take pleasure in honest lips. They value a man who speaks truth. That honest lips is parallel to a man. Honest lips right here. Is parallel to a man who speaks the truth. But although both expressions mean the same, right? The second one further specifies uh, what honest lips are. They're a man that, that values. They're a man that has sense of self-value and worth. And it means a lot to that person. Okay? And then some call these uh, parallels like this right here. Synonymous parallelism synonymous because they're synonymous with one another just the second line uh means more than the first one do you understand okay let's move on to this top one 1023 right here a fool finds pleasure in evil conduct but a man of understanding delights in wisdom let's break her down that's proverbs 1023 Hold on, y'all. Let me get this straight here. Sorry about the lights and stuff in it. Can't help it. Okay. So, where we at? A fool finds pleasure in evil conduct, but a man of understanding delights in wisdom. So, this verse right here presents a contrast, which provides the parallelism, okay? Like, a fool is contrasted with a man of understanding. So, you got a fool is in contrast with a man of understanding. See? Okay. Um, another parallel, if you're looking at your Bible now at 1023, is the action of each person. One finds pleasure Where the other delights. Delights is a stronger word than pleasure. Okay? Um, and these two concepts here, they're very closely related. They're very closely related, aren't they? They are. But the, this one seems to be more impulsive. Where it says a fool finds pleasure in evil conduct. That's more impulsive right there. And this one delights, man, in understanding of wisdom. Now, you understand? So this one's just more, they're a seeker over here. This one's more impulsive over here. Okay? And the true contrast is on what each one finds delight in. Okay? The fool finds pleasure in what? Evil conduct. Okay? Um, the second man, you know, like I said, delights in understanding wisdom. So put that down. 
He delights in understanding wisdom. That means this one's a seeker. He wants it. His heart wants God, man. He wants to do right by God. This one, no. This one's a folly over here. Okay? So the the uh, the final contrast in these two is the key to the whole verse. Look at your verse, 10.23. A fool finds pleasure in evil conduct, but a man of understanding delights in wisdom. The final contrast is the key to the verse right there. Like the rest of the Proverbs, the book invites you to delight in wisdom. And that's what it's doing. That is, in, that is inviting you to delight in wisdom. And Jesus said, if you seek, you will find. If you seek, you will find and delight doing so. And when you start seeing the things God tells you to obey him in, well, delight to do it. He's, he's testing you the whole time you're on this earth with everything you are, with your thoughts, with your feelings, with everything you have, your possessions, everything is a big fat test to see uh, what you find pleasure in or what you delight in. Do you understand? All right, let's look at this one down here. 1517. Turn your Bibles. 1517 while I find the lid of this marker. Dry out on me. Okay. It says, better a meal of vegetables where there is love than a than a fattened calf with hatred. So another important form of parallelism is often called the I mean, let me erase that. The better than parallels. Better than. Better than this. Better than that. The better than put parallels beside of it. Okay. I mean, Proverbs. I'm sorry. The better than. Let me just write this out. The better than Proverbs. That's what these kinds are called. Better a meal of veggies where there is love than, better than, a fattened calf with hatred. Better a meal of veggies where there is love and than a fattened calf. So there's two things here. You okay? You see what I'm saying? That's why I call them the better than Proverbs. Uh, these Proverbs explain why wisdom is superior to folly. Do you see? This one is wisdom at the top line. This one is folly down here. Why would you love a fattened calf with hatred more than you love a meal of veggies where there is love? Do you understand? Okay. So in the book of Proverbs, you know, riches, it'll tell you riches, your money, your possessions, and all that stuff, your family, whatever. Your riches can be a blessing from God. Okay. But not all riches are desirable. You understand that? When riches are accompanied by hatred, like people murdering for money and stuff like that, then so then it leads to, to what? Destruction, man. That's what it does. When riches are accompanied by hatred, then poverty with love is preferable. Most people that have murdered somebody for money right now to this day wishes they never done it that they could take it all back and and they they would be oh i'm so sorry you know and they love that per you know what i'm saying better is a meal of veggies where there is love than a fattened calf with hatred that fattened calf with hatred is everybody that loves that is going to end up in a place called sheol hell they're going to regret it the rest of their life and wish they chose line one that's what i'm trying to tell you okay so copy those notes down right there, and uh, let's talk about Lady Wisdom and Lady Folly real quick. I wish I could find my lid to my marker. I found it. Thank you, Lord. My marker's dropped real quick. Let me erase this just real quick. 
Because I find that Jesus said my own people don't know how to hear him. They don't know his word. Okay? So when you understand how to read it, you know, God anointed some of us to help guide you with that. You get more understanding. And it's very wise, y'all, to seek understanding. Most people reading that Bible don't understand what they read. They really don't. You got people reading that uh, Jesus walked on the water, which he did, and that he calmed the sea, which he did. Then immediately they were at their location on dry ground. People think that's teleportation. It didn't say teleportation. It said immediately. Don't make it what it ain't. Don't put more to it than what it says. He could have teleported him. We don't know. It doesn't say that. You know, so people put words in the Bible that don't belong there. They add to. You understand? And Jesus said, anyone that adds to this, man, don't do it. Don't take from it. Don't add to it. But you won't add to it if you understand it. And you won't be taken away from it if you understand it. Okay? Lady, lady wisdom and lady folly. If you can see that, of course not. You can't. There you go. Okay. So the function of the book of Proverbs is to persuade and instruct. Write that down. The function of the book of Proverbs is to persuade and instruct. Okay. The first thing it does is invite you to make a decision. And the choice is not only a rational one, it involves desires and emotions as well as intelligent and discernment. I hear many people say, pray to God to help me learn discernment, then get in the word. Okay. It's uh, trying to capture, Solomon wrote a lot of this, I told you yesterday, and he was trying to capture your, uh, your will by appealing to your imagination. Okay. So, although the book addresses men only, as was, I told you yesterday, traditional in the ancient societies, it's meant for all of God's people, men and women alike. Things was very different back then, very different back then, okay? In the first nine chapters, the book addresses first nine chapters Addresses a son. Okay? Can you see that? Yeah. Uh, for young men, the choice of the right woman in life is challenging, right? Yes. Well, Proverbs invites you to make an equally life-changing choice. Okay? Choosing wisdom over folly changes lives in a very powerful way. Remember I told you we're here to make choices. Choose wisdom. People say, we don't have anything to do. You got a lot to do. You got a lot to do. You got decisions to make, choices to make. You understand that's going to affect everything that happens to you. Okay? And people are waiting on God. God, just give me, the, give me uh, whatever. Give me wisdom. Give me wisdom. Give me wisdom. Okay? You know what Jesus said? I already gave it to you. On the cross, I said, it is finished. You want wisdom? The, you have the ability already in you. If you're saved, if you know you've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, that enabling power to have wisdom and discernment is already in you. He's saying, get up and seek it. Soak it up. Learn it. You do that. It's already there. As you start seeking, you will start finding, okay? It's already there. So choose wisdom. You got to choose it. You got your choices, y'all. Okay? Wisdom and folly, they're characterized as women. Okay? We hear from both lady wisdom and lady folly as we study through Proverbs. And their invitations become alternatives between life and death. So lady wisdom, in other words, equals life. Lady folly equals death. That's, that's who they represent. Now write that down. Lady wisdom 
equals life. Lady Folly equals death. Okay, and when we're reading the book of Proverbs, we got to allow it to touch our emotions and our wills, our willpower. You understand that? Our free will. God is so trying to teach you here about your free will, y'all. People want to blame everything on God and everything. It's your free will. We got to allow ourselves not just to choose Lady Wisdom, but also to love and pursue her. We got to do it with delight in her. Not because we have to, love to. That's the difference there. Okay? And Lady Wisdom and Lady Folly. All right? I'm going to stop it right there so you'll understand. I don't want to overload you because I got to do my other video. But that's what it is. Lady Wisdom is life. Lady Folly is death. Choose. You get to choose. But when you choose to do anything that you obey God in and stuff, it better come with this word right here, man. Delight to do whatever it is. Not because you have to. Delight in doing what God commands us to do. You understand? All right, you guys. I'm going to see y'all in just a few minutes. I'm going to let this upload and I'm going to do my video on how close we are if we're not already in the tribulation. How close we are to going into it. And again, I'm not setting no dates. I don't need to. <laughs> I'll let this show it to you. The Word of God. Okay? And I'm going to upload that and share it, y'all. Share it because we are on the precipice of, oh boy, of everything. But not to be scared because Revelation has the best ending of the whole book for us, y'all. The best ending. It's the best part of the whole book, man. Is in the last few chapters of Revelation. We are back in Jesus' presence, man. We are back home with Father God. You understand what I'm saying, y'all? We are back home. It's not a scary thing, but what's scary right now is a lot of people ain't ready for it, even in the church. Most of the church walks in disobedience to God. Most of them, they don't even know how to obey God or where to obey God. They don't know what to do. God will teach you here. Some of you, it may make you mad. Can't help it, but God's trying to save you. He's trying to help you. All right? I'll be uploading that in just a few minutes. Write those notes down so you understand as you read through Proverbs. God bless you. Give your life to Jesus Christ. Thanks, some of you, for what you've done. Anything you need to help us with, that's what I'm talking about, is in the description on the video. Or you can go to JesusDoers.com and see it there. Don't forget Igor's World News. He's been updating it for you. It's on JesusDoers.com. Hit the World Tab section. You can see what we're doing in Africa every month there, too. And if you're listening, that's part of you. At least God put it on us, okay? God bless you all. Give your life to Jesus Christ. And... Make him Lord of your life. Follow him. Don't make him follow you. Follow him. God bless you.